Greetings in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you. Peace. We all want peace. But what is it and why do you need it? Well, there, there's all kinds of definitions of peace, but central to all of them is the concept of a state of security and harmony. It's the cessation of hostility and conflict, the end of war. It's something you need because you have since birth been in a constant state of conflict and war. Now, you're like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the fact that you are at war with the creator who made you. You are at war with God. No, I am not, you will say. And my reply is, yes, yes, you are. You're not only at war with God, God is at war with you. This is because, as the Bible says, you have known the truth of God, but exchanged it for a lie. God has made it clear in his creation that he is and that he has eternal power. He's made all things, all the things that you've seen, and that includes all people. And he has made people, he's made man, male and female. This is God's prerogative. It's also his good design that he would do this. And so when you look in the mirror, you know that he's God and you are not. Yet scripture says you've not given thanks to God as you ought, and therefore you don't worship God, and instead you worship the creation. Now, how, how do you do that? Well, it's simple. It's because you refuse to give God thanks for one of the most basic gifts he's given you, your sex. He made you, even before your birth, male or female. It's in your very nature. It's in your bone structure. Even more so, it's down in your DNA. Again, you can see it when you look in the mirror. But you've not been thankful, but instead you've refused to give God honor. Instead, you think you can exchange God for yourself. You think you can be God and take it upon yourself to recreate yourself in the way that you would want. This is ingratitude, and this ingratitude and worship of other gods, namely yourself, puts you at odds with God. Your attempt to play God with surgery, makeup, hairstyles, costumes hormones, that is your inner hostility at God being manifest for all to see. You hate God for being God and for making you who he made you. You're not thankful. Ingratitude is your way of life. And the saddest news of all is that God being good, he gives you actually what you want. You don't want to have him? All right. He gives you over. He allows you to exchange the truth, the good, beautiful truth, for a lie. He lets you give yourself to all manners of evil, evil which will in the end destroy you. And this is because God is good and because God will judge. You are at war with God. And you know, there, there's a couple ways to get peace. And one is, if you're at war, to be able to conquer your enemy, then you can have peace. But the problem is you're at war with God and he is not an enemy that you can defeat. This is a war you cannot win. No matter how many corporations, politicians, friends, or family members flatter you, you cannot win against your creator. In the end, those who are his enemies and remain his enemies will be defeated. God will destroy the wicked. Psalm 37 says, the wicked will perish. And the enemies of the Lord will be like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. You're not going to last forever. Those who foolishly shake their fist at God and think they can go about life in rebellion will find that God has not been silent. God has spoken. And they will find that God's not like them. He's not approving of everything they're doing. What they're going to find is that there's a day coming in which they will have to face him. Now, I know at this point you think I'm just a transphobe, you think I'm a hater, is all he has to say is that we're doomed and, and we're going to hell because of our sin. And no, I, I actually, I want you to know peace. And the peace I'm talking about is I want you to know the end of the war, which is you, you don't have to be at war with God. God himself, though in being holy, is also merciful and kind. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to put an end to hostilities to the war. Christ Jesus lived a holy, blameless life, but evildoers hated him, right? They hated that his righteousness exposed their wickedness of their deeds, right? Evil always hates the light. 
And so they plotted to kill him. They arrested him unjustly. They have falsely accused him. They beat him mercilessly. They mocked him. They did not spare one ounce of pity on him. The enemy of God brought all it had in order to try to defeat Christ. This was ground zero. This was the central battle in the war. And Christ Jesus was placed on the cross. And on the cross, the forces of darkness threw all that it had at Jesus. And Jesus took all the wrath of God for sinners like you and I. So he took in his body all the war, all the evil, all of our ingratitude and sin, and he took the wrath of God for all of that on himself, and he died. And you think, well, evil won. He died. And yet, because he's righteous, he did not stay dead. Evil could not defeat Christ. Jesus rose again. Right? He was seen by over 500 people. And then he ascended into heaven. Right? He walked up the throne room stamps of heaven. And because of his work on the cross, he was given the right to sit on that throne. He was given all authority by God. And now he sits at the right hand of God, reigning as king. And now this King Jesus calls all people to surrender. He calls you to put down your hostilities because the war has already been won. Jesus is calling you to surrender. And what makes you think you can defeat him if death could not? And so surrender. Surrender. Jesus offers clemency to his enemies. He offers those who turn from this war peace with God. If you turn from your sin and by faith submit yourself to Christ, you may be forgiven of your sin. If you will confess Jesus as Lord, you can have peace with God. And, and what's more, more than just the end of hostility, peace with God means harmony and tranquility with God. It means friendship with God. In fact, it means adoption as sons and daughters of God. To those who love Jesus, they're given the right to be the son of God, the child of God, and therefore they get to inherit the promises of God for his children. You too can defeat death and have eternal life. Part of the down payment of these promises that those who receive Christ are given God himself, the Holy Spirit, to live in them and enable them to live in obedience to God. He will enable you to find joy in being the sex he made you to be. The truth is God made you to either be a man or a woman. This is not something you can change with surgery or wishful thinking. But if you will simply submit to Christ and stop fighting, you will find you can actually have joy and tranquility with what God made you. Right? He didn't create you wrongly. He made you as a man to be a man. It's good. It's something you can be thankful for. If he made you a woman, he made you that way on purpose. It is good to be a woman. He made you by design, not out of spite or malicious intent. And it was not an accident, on purpose. And those who have peace with God know the intense love God has for us. And we know that then him creating the, us this way is good and because he loves us. He made you a man because he loved you. The war we have waged is our own doing, and it's blinded us to the truth, and it's made you exchange the beauty of God's good creation for the ugliness of drag queens, hormone replacements, and surgeries that you know deep down do not satisfy you. Do you want peace? Are you tired of fighting? Stop. Stop fighting. Look to Jesus. Plead with Christ to give you mercy. Beg him to forgive you. And trust that he does. The good news is that for those who confess their sins, God is faithful and just to forgive them. So stop worshiping yourself. Stop being ungrateful. Stop believing lies. Instead, rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to him for the sex he created you with. Just be thankful to God and worship him. And the Bible promises the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so may this peace be upon you.